Hello and welcome back to the Fencing Referee YouTube channel. My name is Lisa Campy Sapri and I can be found on thefencingref.com, the Fencing Referee on Facebook, and please don't forget to subscribe right here. Now we are continuing with the penalty chart. The penalty chart is one of those things where if you know it cold, you can keep that calm in your voice and you can apply the rules the way that you're supposed to. The early modules, we talked a lot about communicating, but if you don't know what you're communicating, you're not gonna be able to keep that composure and that calm. But if you study this chart, you will be able to apply the rules and have that air of knowing what you're doing, not arrogance, just knowing what you're doing and being there for the athletes. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but I confessed that I have given each and every one of these yellow cards in my refereeing career. Now you're maybe not gonna believe it, but I'll get to that in just a second. Remember the first group is yellow then red, and those are for minor things, those are just for the bout. The second group is also just for the bout. They can cause annulments, like if I pair with my back arm and then I hit a valid, I annul that. They are things that are again, instant red. These guys were going to more of a behavioral things, and I call them yellow to black. And those are again, things like dishonest fencing, disturbing order. If you're the athlete, you get the red. If you're not the athlete, you get the yellow or possibly directly to black, depending on what you did. And then the last group, the fourth group, those are the super serious things like fraud or manifest cheating with equipment. Those are the serious ones. We've been continuing with all of our penalty chart, all of the cards. And we are now on one called grounding the weapon on the metallic vest. This is when I tattle a little bit about my age. I've been refereeing since I was 18 years old and that's going on 27, 28 years. And I actually remember giving this card because some of the boxes, a lot of the boxes at that time had already transferred into not being able to ground out, what's called, what I would call grounding out. And you would take your pommel, whether it was covered with tape or not, or your grip, and you would put it against your metallic vest. And if somebody tried to hit you, the valid light, the red or the green light, wouldn't go on. That was considered intentionally putting an uninsulated part of your weapon onto your metallic vest to allow or to make the opponent not register a touch. It's still in the rule books, I checked. It's one of those older ones, I guess there's still some older machines out there. Um, I don't know how they could be the most current timing, but they might still be out there. And that's the only reason I can really think of why this is still on there. But I actually did, as an 18 year old referee, give this as a card. Obviously, this one is just for foil. This is not for Sabre. The next one that we have is in Sabre. It specifies in Sabre. Now you remember, we went over last, last module, the bending or dragging the weapon or point on the conductive piece is only for foil or epe. This one specifies in Sabre. The other thing to mention about this is that if there is an asterisk on a little star, on the next to the rule, next to the summary of the rule. Remember, these are not the full rules. These are just a summary. You go over here and that little star means annulment of any touch scored by the fencer at fault. And this is important for the next one that we're going to be going over. In Sabre, touch scored with the guard. This is a different rule than in foil and an epic. Blow with guard or pommel is the last one on our group two reds and they are an automatic red. Doesn't say to the mask, it says blow with guard or pommel, period. That's a red. Whereas here it says in saber for my grammarians, comma, touch scored with the guard. So in essence, if there is it's not if the touch is not scored with the side of the blade or any part of the blade in saber actually, then it is considered a yellow card. The next part of this, which again is saber specific, any forward movement crossing the legs or feet. So a lot of times, um, if you watch the World Cup tapes, sometimes the videos in, on YouTube, you'll see somebody go like this, but they also then go like this, meaning they think the person did a flesh, a crossing of the feet. 
Here's an interesting thing about this card. If the camera is my, is my opponent and you attack me with a flesh motion and I counterattack and I hit and I hit the valid surface, even if I did not have priority, what you have done is crossed your feet. You violated the rules that we can see right here is a yellow card. However, the rules say that what you do is annulled. And if I happen to have hit something, I actually get the point. It's like what you did never existed. It's like a Jedi mind trick and that light never went on. But if my light goes on, I get a point. That's a little strange. Your touch gets annulled because you crossed your feet to do that. My random counterattack, I got a light on, gets a point. Now, if I don't hit you at all, I don't get a point unless it's your second time crossing your feet, right? Because yellow to red. Make sense? So when you are looking at this summary, you've got to be looking, is it a foil, epe or saber specific? And does it have the annulment? One of the great comments I had from one of the watchers was, why don't they group the annulments? And I'll be honest, I don't know the answer to that. When I was studying for uh, one of the tests I took, I actually had a set of cards that I called oddball annulments, meaning ones that were kind of strange. Dishonest fencing over here was one of those. I couldn't figure out, of course, dishonest fencing would annul the touch, but I couldn't figure out how to remember that. But when we get to that section, I'll tell you if I can remember how I remembered it. All right, so for my mind, I wanted to go over one more thing with, with crossing the legs. For my mind, what we have to divide in our head is, was the crossing of the legs or feet part of the manifestation of the touch? Sometimes people do an action and then they kind of, as the follow through, they'll do like that hopping thing and then they'll cross. That is not part of the manifestation of the touch. And that's what you have to divide in your head. If person fleshes and they're hitting and the hitting is part of that flesh, then it's an annulment and it's a yellow card. But if that flesh, that crossing of the feet is not part of the manifestation of the touch, then it is not a card and it is not, not a touch. Did I say that right? I think I did. Make sense? Give me comments. If it doesn't make sense, I want to make sure it makes clear. And if you need me to go over it again, let me know. I'll, I'll do another video. I promise. Next one we're going to go over is a pretty serious one and it's called refusal to obey the referee. This one is, it kind of is a broad umbrella. The referee's there for you and you, let me see, I, I gave myself a little hint, refusal to obey. You pledge to honor and obey the rules. That's what you're doing when you become a fencer. You are scrupulously obeying the orders of the referee. Now the referee's not going to ask you to do a tap dance and the referee's not going to ask you to, you know, uh, do, you know, do a soft shoe and look like Fred Astaire with your foil. They're not going to make you do anything like that. But if your referee says you need to get back on the strip, guess what you need to do? You need to get back on the strip. You're supposed to stay where you're supposed to be. And this doesn't mean that if there's a misapplication of the rules that you can't protest it, but it does mean that you're supposed to obey the referee. I've had a couple people get cards in over the years because they stepped off the strip to do something and they didn't ask. And I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're supposed to say, oh, well, I just need to do. And it's like, no. You need to stay on the strip. When a lot of in the uh, in the states they call this disobedience, and um, to me it's implied that you're not supposed to yell bad words. Um, and so to me it's implied that 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 courtesy, that ability to maintain an excellent sportsman or sportswoman, is there. So if somebody says a bad word and I tell them. I heard that that was under your breath next time. Don't do it. And then they say it again. Then I can give a card and say, well, that's for disobedience. 
And I've had a lot of uh, referees who wanted to keep the decorum of having no bad words. I also understand a couple different languages, and I never tell the fencers which re you know which languages I understand because I understand some bad words in a variety of languages. And uh, it's my way of saying, don't say that. I know what that means, and don't say it again because otherwise I will consider it to be disobedience. I don't say it that long. I just tell them not to do it especially when it's under their breath and it could be escalating, right? You are the person in the position of authority. It's your job to de-escalate a situation. That's really important. And when people get frustrated and they say a bad word, for example, and you say, I heard that, don't do that again. The next time they do it, you can say, well, that's disobedience. There you go. There's your card. So disobedience we covered today. We covered crossing of the feet in saber. We covered non-insulated grip, the weird kind of antiquated rule. We are not going at a particularly fast pace through these, but this is something that as you go through all of these learning modules, you're going to be grateful that we went a little bit in depth because these are ones that will become solid and solidly placed in your brain and you won't have to be worrying about now which group was that oh that's one of the ones that Lisa went over the first few learning modules there you go got yourself through another learning module with the fencing referee I can be found on thefencingref.com and the fencing referee on Facebook and please subscribe and please keep trying to improve your refereeing and by all means give me comments I want to know what you guys want to learn Thank you so much for improving the entire sport of fencing. You make yourself a better referee. You make all of us better. Thanks so much.